One thing that is affecting a lot of people across the world is the fact that everything's getting more expensive. So although I've tried to address things like, you know, how to make a sort of budget piece for less than £10, you could look at that video and think, right, that's fine, but I haven't got a sound blast or I don't want to pay for a subscription to a software platform or something like that. So I really want to get people involved in this craft and I don't want them to be put off by things like the fact that, you know, the equipment and materials are expensive. So in this video, I want to make a sort of budget piece with things that you can buy off Amazon uh, or from sort of discount stores and stuff like that. And provide some kind of basic templates as well so you don't have to kind of go to the effort of kind of doing your own designs. So anyway, before I crack on with that, if you're a fan of reverse glass, sign painting, gold leaf, uh, digital processes and much more, then you're in the right place because that's what this channel's about and I try to release a video every couple of weeks. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description. There's also a link to buy me a coffee if you'd like to buy me a coffee or a beer. And a link to the Facebook group where everyone's sort of on there sharing ideas and helping each other out. So it's a really good place to go if this is your cup of tea. Anyway, that out of the way, let's crack on with it. Right, so before we start, I'm just going to run through the kit we'll be using. So first of all, and the only real single expense from this is this picture frame. When I say single expense, I mean all of these other things you're going to get multiple uses out of. But because we're creating a piece and this is going to be, well, what it's made out of, this is going to be your one-off expense that, that is just solely attributed to this one piece. So this is from The Range, which is a UK sort of home discount store. This is £3.50. It's 10 by 8 inch uh, picture size, which is sort of quite standard imperial sizes, you know, so you, if the designs that I'm going to be supplying, they're done to 10 by 8, but they'll scale up to things like 12 by 16, 16 by 20, and things like that. So £3.50 for a picture frame. Um, I'll put links to everything that I'm using in the description. I'm using UK based products, but I'll also provide links for the US equivalent. So picture frame from the range, £3.50. Going to need some standard glass cleaner, nothing special. Some black spray paint. This is the American equivalent. Um, in the UK, this would be Rust-Oleum Mirror Effect Spray Paint. It's about £7 on Amazon. I'll put a link to that. This is Krylon Looking Glass. This is the sort of US equivalent, and I think this is cheaper in the US than the Rust-Oleum. Going to need oh, something with a straight edge. Um, doesn't have to have measurements on, but, you know, any, any old ruler. Um, an HB pencil or a softish pencil that's not too sharp. A craft knife. And carbon paper. I've got 100 sheets for £5 off Amazon. This is for transferring the design onto the kind of vinyl, which we'll be using as a stencil, which brings me onto the vinyl. So this is um, just a roll of white self-adhesive vinyl. Um, you don't have to buy a roll. You can buy these in like individual A4 sheets for not a lot of money, pound, two pound or something like this. But a big roll like this is, I think it's 60 centimetres by six metres. And you can normally get two for 12 pound delivered. So, I mean, I always go with that. It seems, you know, like the, the, the best thing to do if you're going to sort of make more than, more than a few. Lastly, just um, a squeegee to apply the vinyl. These are about two or three pound on eBay. You don't have to have this. You could use sort of like a credit card or something like this, but for two or three quid, uh, if, yeah, it's it definitely worth getting. It's, it's a nicer thing to use than a credit card. So lastly is a design. So what I've got here is a reverse printed K. And um, if you have a look in the video description, I've prepared a whole alphabet. They're all got a eight by 10 inch border. They're all, a, they're a free font. I think it's called Alleheny or something like that. But I've reversed them, I've outlined them. So they'll print from any sort of Chrome browser or something like that, because they're all PDFs. So yeah, if, just go down there, have a look, download all of them, and, and then you've got your template. So you just need to print them out at the size they're at. Right, I think that's everything. So let's get cracking making it. Right, so obviously I forgot something in my list of um, materials, and that's this. This is um, glass etching cream, and this is a, uh, the brand Armour Edge, but you can just type in etching cream in a Google search, and there's sort of all different types. 
Okay, now I'll put a link in Amazon. This wasn't very expensive. It was about £12. And although that's small, that really goes a long way. I've got so many different pieces out of this and there's still plenty left. And then you'll just need something to apply it with. So it could be anything like just a naff old paintbrush or a lolly stick or something like this. And rubber gloves. You know, it is acid. So, you know, although it's a product, you know, that you can buy on Amazon, you know, it's, it's you know, an adults only sort of product and you could sort of hurt yourself if you don't use it properly. So certainly goggles and rubber gloves are a must for this, but we'll get onto that in a bit. So for now, I've taken the glass out of the picture frame and I'm just going to give that a clean. And I don't want to be too patronising and teach you how to clean glass, but really just, you know, making sure it's done um, quite thoroughly because you don't want to sort of get to the end and then see that you've left a sort of fingerprint on where there's a sort of, you know, one of the parts of the design. So general rule of thumb is when it starts to squeak, it's, it's pretty clean. So this wall I've got under the glass um, is just something to protect it. So this is, I'd cut up an old yoga mat, but anything like, you know, tea towel or towel of, of any sort will do, just so you don't sort of scratch the other side of the glass. So I've cut a bit of vinyl to a little bit bigger than I need it, so I can always trim it down. And this is one of the things where you just, you know, you need to get used to doing this. It might be a little bit awkward to start with, but it gets much, much easier the more you do it. So what I'm gonna do is start by just peeling one edge of this and then just making a fold uh, on the sort of backing paper. So Another thing I should probably mention about the equipment. So I, I'm using black spray paint for this, but that's not a requirement. You know, it's just uh, um, any color spray paint really depends on the sort of colors that you'd, you'd like to be doing. I just thought with a black frame it'd look nice to have a sort of solid black piece so there you go that is now stuck on there and then you don't have to worry about trying to apply a big old sticky thing and sort of getting air bubbles and things like that so what you do then is take hold of the back and paper and pull it upwards and then just Gently, you know, maybe centimetre by centimetre, just sort of slide that on. Don't worry if there are a few air bubbles in, you can always um, burst them with your craft knife. And also when you do this, just keep a sort of reasonably firm hold up here. Because I've done it before where you sort of push too hard on this and then you've just sort of pulled it out of, of, your, of the hand that's holding it and then you end up, yeah, it sort of just falls on there, not very evenly. So that can be, you have to start again sometimes when that happens. So there, not bad. A few little bubbles, but again, like I said, easy to just pop out with the craft knife. So then with that, I can just pop that knife in here where the edges of that are, push it against the edge of the glass. Just get all that off. So. Right, so just pop a couple of these little bubbles, and then once you put one little tiny hole in it, that'll uh, they'll flatten down perfectly. Right, so vinyl's all sorted, and then I've just cut out around the sort of outline of the design, and then just sellotaped it on at the top, so it's sort of got a little bit of a hinge effect I suppose it's just so that this doesn't move when we're tracing it so on to the next part and that is getting a little bit of transfer paper put this down in here and then I'm just going to trace around this now the line's quite thick uh, and it doesn't really matter you know much but I'm going to draw around the inside of it 
because there's going to be a sort of border that we're doing afterwards. So let's I'll just do that with my ruler. But, um, this technique isn't something I was familiar with really. Um, when I say technique, using the carbon paper, because the traditional way of doing this, of transferring your design onto onto the back of something, is it's something called pounce or pounce wheels. They're these like little uh, wheels with with points on the end, and you sort of run them around the design. That sort of perforates everything where where you need to kind of paint on, and then you rub this sort of dark powder on. It goes through the little perforation holes. Um, if that doesn't make sense, I'll put a link to a video in the top right corner of um, of that process if, if anyone's interested in that. There you go, there's our design. And, you know, that this bit of paper will still be good for loads of uses. And I mean, you get 100 in a pack, so probably last you forever. Right, so now I'm just going to cut along these lines. And this is, you know, my drawing isn't very accurate. You can see, and some of these are a little bit, bit sloppy, but this is where I really do want to be very accurate, you know, because these are going to be the sharp lines on as part of your design. You've still got, you know, a little bit to play with in terms of if you do slip out the line, it's not going to matter as long as you just correct it and do do the right line. Um, you know, because this stuff, even, you know, with a cut in it, you're not going to get stuff seeping through it. It's pretty good. Right, so we're on to the glass etching part now. So, like I said, gloves, goggles, and I'll put something long-sleeved on as well, because, yeah, if you get this on your skin, it's going to burn. And, you know, you want to get it off as quick as possible, rinse it loads. But all I'm doing, scooping this out with a sort of plastic lolly stick, and then sort of smoothing it on. Now, this takes just minutes to etch the glass and don't sort of be disheartened if, if when you rinse it off it doesn't look very even or anything like that you can just do it again or you know or apply it thicker whatever it's one of them things once glass is etched it's they call it binary which basically means it's either not necessarily black or white but you know it's either clear or etched and you're not going to get varying degrees of sort of tonal etch with um, something like this. It will once it's gone as, as sort of etched as it will go. That that's it. So it doesn't matter. Like I say, after the first time, if it looks a little bit um, uneven and patchy, just do it again. Right, let's get that a rinse and have a look at it. So, I'm just going to bring my camera over to the sink. Put that somewhere to dry and then we'll see how even that etch has come out and whether it's going to need another coat of the armor etch right so washed it off let it dry and i think it does need another coat looking at that you know you can see it's not the tidiest but one more coat of that and that'll be perfect you know i sort of didn't give it the most even coating 
So yeah, I'm just going to repeat that process exactly the same, and then we should be able to move on to the next step after that. So right, so that is so much better. Look at that; it's still a little bit wet, but that's just a really nice even etch, exactly how I want it. So moving on, what we're going to do now is cut ourselves a nice little border. And I mean a sort of border around the letter. So using the ruler again, and what I'm looking at is probably one to two mil, you know, um, just exactly around the outside of the whole thing. So I'm going to do that the exact same way as I did before when the lines are there. So you just have to kind of gauge how wide it is. But yeah, it's, it's not too hard when, you, when you're using the ruler. Some of these are going to be a bit freehand as well, but um, yeah, I think you know it doesn't it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. This this is going to look nice, even if there are a few little lines that have gone askew or something like that. Right, so I've done the trimming all around the edge. So now I'm going to. Just snip this little bit in half so that I can pull it off as, as one strip. That's looking really nice. So you need enough to worry about these. That's just some of the dried etching cream. So I'm going to give this glass one last clean before the next bit anyway. So. But hopefully you can see this sort of starting to come together now. Right, <clears throat> so that's looking good. I'm just going to give that one last clean just to get rid of any of these little bits of um, dried etching cream. And then we'll be on to the last stages. So it's a really quick project this, you know, it's, um, other than the very few little bits I've speeded up, you know, I haven't sort of done anything in the background to prep anything. This really is, you know, you, you can do one of these start to finish in, in less than an hour. So. All right, so just leave that to dry and then we'll get on with the painting. Right, I'm out in the shed now um, because I'm going to be doing some spray painting. I've got the door open because I need to kind of keep it ventilated because it's pretty strong stuff. There's our glass piece. I've just got it on a bit of board behind it just so that no paint goes around sort of as because you know as it's misting up I want it to be on the front of the glass. So let's just start. So this um the mirror effect paint you want to be applying it super, super thin. It only takes a minute or two to dry, and then you do about sort of four or five coats. So let's get this on there. This sort of distance, which I don't know if that's visible, but it's sort of about, I don't know, 12 inches, something like that. So just like that. Tiny, really thin coats. You know, don't want to overdo it. Want to just sort of a mist, just sort of touching it. And then that'll build up. And although you'll see it here sort of changing into a sort of mirror mirror coating, it's the other side where it's really working on. And that, that will give a kind of really nice mirror finish on the clear glass. And on the etched glass, it will give a sort of grey frosted mirrored finish. So what I'll do now is I'll switch this to time lapse because rather than just sort of watching me spray paint for the next five minutes, but you can see it build up uh, through the time lapse.
Right, that's enough coat into the mirror effect paint. So I'm just going to take the white vinyl off now to do the last bit, which is the black paint. So just a bit of explanation why I'm using Krylon rather than Rust-Oleum. Um, very early on when I started the channel, I did a video where I was comparing mirror spray paints and I was comparing Krylon and Rust-Oleum. So I bought both um, and I used all of the Rust-Oleum. They're literally the same, you know, um, except in England you'll pay 20 quid for a can of Krylon or seven quid for a can of Rust-Oleum. So yeah, I've got this left over from that. Going forward with, with mirror paint, I would 100% buy the Rust-Oleum because it's the same and so much cheaper. Right, so onto the black and there's nothing special about this. This was just the cheapest black spray paint that I could find online. So yeah, that's it. Let's just cake this in black now. There you go. It's quick, it's easy, it's relatively cheap, you don't need any specialist equipment to make it, and it's quite versatile. You know, I've sort of showed you my method because I wanted to sort of etch the glass and show a nice sort of bit of mirror finish, but you don't have to do any of those things, you know, you don't have to use the etching cream, you don't have to use the mirror spray. Do it with just different colours, you know, spray one colour, cut out the border, spray a different one, and, you know, experiment. There's a, a nice set of letter templates there for you to sort of play around with. So, yeah, I hope it sort of piqued your interest and, you know, would, would entice some new people into giving this a try. It's certainly a nice way to test the water without having to invest in the sort of, you know, gilding equipment and stuff like that. But, you know, if you do like it, then certainly I'd recommend taking the next steps and, and following some of the other videos to see what you can do. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and click the little thumbs up icon and please share the video with anyone else who you think might enjoy it. So till next time, cheers.